So, hello, hello everyone. Thank you to join our presentation today. We want to tell you about our new version of uh, C3D Toolkit 2020. And today our developers will tell you about most of, of the new features and improvements in all the modules of our toolkit. Uh, so today we have only one marketing presentation from me, so all other presentations will be from developers to developers. Uh, so let me start. Uh, I want to tell you a little bit about uh, what's new for c 3 uh, this year and uh, last year. How are we going? Uh, first of all, uh, short information for those of you who are not customer of C3D. Our main product is a C3D toolkit. This is the complete solution for engineering software developers. And it consists of five modules. Geometric modeling kernel modeler in the center in this diagram. A data exchange module C3D converter. A parametric constraint solver visualization engine vision and our newest module B shaper uh, that is transform polygonal models into boundary representation. A little bit about each of these modules. The main uh, product, main part of uh, our toolkit is a geometric modeling kernel. It's quite classic uh, geometric modeling kernel based on boundary representation and we're developing uh, this uh, kernel more than 25 years for now. Uh, it provides you with functionality of solid and surface modeling, direct model modeling, special part for sheet metal modeling and this is unique functionality for uh, modeling kernels and several additional functions like collision detection, geometric calculations and planar projections. Using this kernel you can develop your own computer-aided design system for 3D and 2D or add 3D functionality to your CAM or KAI software or something uh, else. Next module is a parametric constraints solver. It uh, provides you functionality to operate with the constraints in 2D drawings in 3D sketchers and also to construct assemblies in a 3D and to do the kinematic analysis. So C3D solver is a two parts solver for 2D and for 3D also. You can use both of them or separate separately. Next part maybe is quite small but very important is a data exchange module C3D converter. We can read and write file formats in STEP, JT, Parasolid, ACES, IGES, STL in VRML. It's very important that we support product manufacturing information PMI for STEP and JT. And yes, also we support our own file format C3D. So you can also uh, read and write C3D format in your own software. We do not support native file formats from different CAD systems. So it's not our part of a business, only exchange formats. Next module is a C3D Vision. This is the visualization engine based on OpenGL. Now it's only a desktop application and uh, you can visualize 3D model and uh, use different special CAD, uh, CAD uh, functionality in your, in your product like 3D model position control, sand management, lighting and material separations, level of details and some productivity tools like frustum culling or pixel culling. So we try to make this uh, engine work very fast with huge 3D models. The last module is a C3D B shaper. This is the newest part of our solution. Uh, it transforms polygonal models, meshes into boundary representation, into BREP. Uh, later, uh, we will tell you more about what, uh, what this uh, module can do and uh, how it works. Uh, a few words about our results. 
Uh, last year, we grew more than for 50% in C3D toolkit sales. We did it two years uh, in a row. Uh, and uh, for us, uh, as a Russian company, it's very important that uh, more than 50% of our total revenue we generated by international operations. So now developers working with C3D toolkit from 12 different countries uh, all over the world. So now we have uh, almost 40 customers who developed different systems like computer-aided design, computer-aided engineering software, computer-aided manufacturing software, building information modeling, uh, and uh, a lot of other uh, applications when you need uh, accurate 3D model. Our old customers uh, continue to release new version of their products based on C3D. Uh, I want to show you uh, some of them. Uh, for example, our parent company, Ascon, will release uh, Compass 3D V19 uh, in the end of July. Uh, this is the mechanical CAD software, one of the most popular mechanical CAD in Russia. And today you will see a lot of new features of C3D that is already embedded in, uh, integrate in uh, Compass. Next one is a Nanosoft company and their platform Nanocut Pro. Uh, they switch their kernel from one of the well-known kernels in the market to C3D. It was a really hard work, but now they use only C3D kernel for all their products for mechanical design and for building information modeling. Uh, next one is uh, PCB design software Altium Designer from uh, US company Altium. Uh, they use C3D for multi-board assembly in a 3D space. The first version uh, was released uh, two years ago with, with the C3D inside. Uh, next one is uh, APM company. Uh, whose main product, APM Win Machine, is a computer-aided engineering software. And they also have APM Studio, the product, uh, who is preparing uh, 3D models for simulation. And they switch from their own geometric kernel to, to C3D. Uh, it takes less than one year. It's very fast, really very fast. We're working also in a field of building information modeling. Uh, one of our first customers in this field, a Renga software company, they have three products, uh, architecture, engineering construction, and MEP. And uh, this third product was also released uh, year, one year ago. And all these products uh, are based on C3D kernel. Next one is a SIP beam model checker uh, product from um, from the, uh, from the Spain uh, they uh, also uh, integrate C3D very fast and this is the first their product based on C3D for building information modeling and very similar product pilot beam also from our parent company Ascon and this is first product that use C3D B shaper uh, inside and uh, to to, to, to make uh, the huge beam models lighter. Also, we work in a field of computer-aided engineering software. Uh, one of our customers is the PASS company and their product Equip and Nozzle Fem for piping uh, simulation use C3D for all geometrical uh, tasks. Or oh, another company, uh, Terra Analysis from Denmark, and uh, they just released uh, Quick Field uh, 6.4, first version with C3D kernel inside. Before that, uh, they use open source kernel. And this news is on our website, so you can read um, why they did it, what was the reason to switch to uh, another kernel. And the last one sample for today is a VR concept company. This is our first customer in the field of uh, virtual reality. Uh, now they use only converters just to read JT or step files into virtual reality. But next step for them is to use some modeling functionality in a VR. Very interesting uh, startup, very interesting project. Uh, so, we have not only customers, we are working close with our partners from all over the world. 
Uh, for example, we have three development partners, Encirco, Ledas, and Rubios. All of these companies know C3D very well. They're experts in a 3D, 3D modeling and in developing overcatch systems. So if you do not have enough resources to integrate our kernel, you can ask them to do it. So all of these companies are very well qualified and help you can help you with this. Uh, another partner is the Open Design Alliance. Uh, we have a bridge between C3D and ODA platform. And using this bridge, you can work with DWG format as a native format in your application. We do not support this file format and this and the best way for you if you need DWG support is to go to Open Design Alliance and you can use it with a C3D kernel and there is no problem uh, in the, for this uh, integration. Uh, next uh, partner is new for us. This is the Cadenas company from Germany. Uh, this is the uh, very, very big, uh, very well-known online catalogs of different uh, parts for the models for architectural field and for manufacturing field. So now they use our C3D converter and they can uh, output files in a C3D file format. For example, if you use on the left uh, beam catalog, if you work in a beam field, you can choose part, select C3D file format and import data to your software in a C3D format. Or you can see on the right side, if you use part compu community for manufacturing uh, 3D models, you can also use C3D file format. Maybe it's one more reason for you to integrate import or export of C3D files in your product. For example, uh, all the products of our parent company Ascon, Renga in Beam and Compass in a Mechanical CAD can read and write C3D file format. Uh, what else I want to tell you? Uh, we try to be very good partner for you, not just a, a solution supplier. We try to uh, answer all your questions and we try to solve all your tickets. Last year we solved more than 1000 customer tickets. It's much more than year before. Uh, we try to do it as good as we can and as fast as we can. Our staff is growing so that's why we can do it, uh, continue to do it in the next years. Uh, but uh, we support right now a lot of different technologies for you. We support different operation system, different uh, development environments. And uh, yeah, bec because you ask us about that, we try to do it. But now we have several technology that are not really good for us. They are very old and they can uh, don't give us um, opportunity to move forward to continue our development faster. For example, it's uh, Visual Studio 2010, 2012, 2013. So we want to uh, stop uh, support of, the, of these uh, old technologies. So if you use it, please uh, talk to our uh, engineers and uh, I, I wish to find the solution how we can stop support of uh, this old product. It will be better for everyone, for us and for you as our customers also. Uh, what else? Uh, now we, uh, this, this winter, we released all new cfridewebs.com website. As usual, you can find the, our developer manual and documentation. It's open for everyone. And now you can use our website on your tablets or smartphones. But also we add a new page, getting started. You need uh, to register to, to go to this page. It's a separate registration, not that uh, that you have uh, using our service desk, but it's easy just registrate and then you can find uh, a lot of getting started videos about the toolkit about the vision about the b shaper and uh, a special training courses 10 steps that can help you to uh, to, to learn c3d so you can use it to teach your new people who come to your company and uh, who will work with C3D. So please uh, have a look at uh, this new page and give us your feedback.
feedback is that good for you or maybe you you, you need we need to do something else for you so uh, today we continue our product development we do not stop any uh, any activities uh, during the pandemic we all of us are working from homes and uh, today we will show you a new release c3d 2020 uh, we use our own expertise and uh, industry trends to develop our solution and also we are uh, listen to our customers and try to implement all your requirements to our solution. So this is uh, all that I want to tell you and I think that now it's time uh, it's time to to introduce you uh, my colleague Yuri Kazulin who is a C3D Hello. model team leader and who will tell you about new features in a C3D modera. So no more marketing today for today. Now just uh, mathemat mathemat mathematics and uh, features, features, features. So Yuri, welcome. Hello. Is it visible? Uh, right. Not yet. Yes, yes, right now, yes. OK. OK, we want to tell you about uh, some new features, uh, improvements and plans in our modeling model. Some of the new features will be detailed in the next report, so they will be only mentioned here. So, according to the subject of improvements, uh, they can be divided into four parts. The first part is objects modeling the second uh, model project model projection the third is improvements in the in the diagnostics and measurements functionality and the last section is uh, the changes in the naming of the models working with art attributes and history of buildings about new feature as will be described in more detailed in the next section the main novelties for surface modeling are conic section surfaces merging uh, smoothly joining faces and uh, construction of smooth curves in addition to these features there are a number of new functionality elements in sweeping shell operation surface from curve mesh uh, and the lofted surface feature in sheet metal and fillet or rounding feature. In the sweeping shell operation, you can now explicitly control the movement of the generate generation element in accordance with normal uh, of the surface uh, the guide curves uh, lie, lies on. If such a uh, surface can be determined for this guide curve. Previously, this option was, uh, was hidden inside the algorithm, which led to less predictable behavior for the user. As you can see, you can get different shapes of the sweep body using this option. You can also use uh, the function where the input is not guide curve but a wrapper about it in this case you will have more um, complete control over the shape but if you use if you use it incorrectly you can get unexpected results also uh, in the sweeping shell features it's now possible to set not only curves or faces but also simple convex bodies as uh, generatics this i hope will allow in some cases to create more complex body without additional construction you can also of course combine uh, these two new options perform a body sweep with the movement depending on the normal of the guide curve surface the next uh, uh, we are going to the surface from curve mesh. Uh, here you can now use uh, multi-segment contours to define a network of curves. 
This extends uh, the possibilities of buildings based on this surface. Internal parameterization, parameterization has been improved in the surface. This made it uh, possible to improve the smoothness of junction between the cells of the surface in some cases, as you can see from uh, the illustration on the bottom right. The next uh, feature. Uh, the lofted surface now has an additional feature for controlling the shape of the surface. If the end section uh, are set as points, we called this option the dome. By setting the vector and some coefficient, you can control the shape of the surface uh, when approaching the point, sec point section. Uh, in sheet metal parts, you can now use stamping with an arbitrary body. If, uh, as if it uh, were performed using a die or a punch, the thickness uh, of the stamping section may be different from the thickness of the sheet. Uh, so, creation of curved uh, edges flanges is coming soon, not ready right, right now. Uh, they can be added uh, to a single curved edge or to a chain of several uh, several edges. In this case, um, the edges must be tangent. Curved edge flange can be flattened and bent uh, again with uh, unfold and fold uh, tools. And uh, in the existing three-phase rounding operation, you can now use closed chains of faces. Perhaps so this is more likely as improvement rather than the new product. So, and uh, the next section of this uh, presentation will be told by Andrei Penkin. Thank you. Well, let me introduce Andrei Penkin, link developer of a C3D model uh, kernel. And uh, hello everyone i continue telling you about uh, using 3d c3d modeler and um, now about improvements that can be related to uh, improvements that can be related to surface modeling and uh, they are filleting edges along the reference curve on one of the faces extension of the multiple boundary faces simultaneously, managing the distance of offset curves and surfaces. This will be detailed in the next report. Improvements were also made in shell cutting, thin walled and median shells, merging edges, uh, processing self intersections of generatrices of sets, flat faces recognition and intersection curves. In the shell cutting feature, a variant of the function with a universal parameter structure was developed. You can use it to set all possible options for cutting the shell by sketch, by surface, or by other shell. The old versions of the functions are deprecated and may be removed in the next release. When cutting with the surface, you can control the extension of the following surface groups, flat surfaces, rotation surfaces, and extrusion surfaces. The slide shows an example of cutting with a rotation surface that has been extended along the angle and the axis. Uh, before, flat surfaces were always extended to the maximum size of the cut body. In other cases, small uncontrolled surface extensions were performed. Extension management can be extended to other groups of surfaces if necessary. The functionality of the median shell has been improved. Now you can set a range of thicknesses instead of a single value. Disconnected faces now reach each other until they intersect. Processing in the fillet area was improved. In sweeping operations such as extrusion and rotation, offset curves and self-intersection processing was improved. Now you can build such options as shown on the slide. 
Now let's go to the projection section. The quality of surfaces outlined drawing has been improved. The development of multi-threaded processing is actively continuing. From the new one, it is now possible to project the center lines of surfaces into the drawing. It is implemented for elementary surfaces, rotation and sweep surfaces. The visibility of these lines depends on the visibility of the corresponding surfaces in the drawing. In this release, diagnostics and measurements can be grouped into a separate section. There is now a, a universal function for diagnosing a sketch on surface, a set of contours. Diagnostic for threaded connections has been improved. There is a new function for fixing small defects in the edges. In the converter module, it is used for correcting imported geometry. Alexander Spivakov will tell you more about this in his report on converters. Additional functions for estimating and calculating curvature has been added to the functionality of curves and surfaces. They are already used in CAD Compass 3D version 19. Two working functions for measuring uh, minimum distances between bodies are now available in dimension section. The first one is in the modeling module. It is implemented by means of the Boolean operation functions and works with two bodies. The second function has a wide range of applications and is implemented through the collision detection functionality. Alexander Maxim Maximenko will tell you about it in detail. Functionality for solids intersections diagnostics has been improved. Uh, there should no longer be any loss of tangent intersections along the edge if there are volume intersections. Optionally, you can search for point touch of shell vertices and touch of analytical surfaces. In general, this search is slow and will be implemented if there are requests for it. Now let's go to the last section, which deals with names, attributes, and the building history. Names in the kernel can be used along with attributes for binding body elements with building features and their identification. Therefore, when the feature of cutting a shell with sweeping body was developed, work was also carried out to correct the naming, so that you can distinguish the cut Ah, the cut faces from the faces of the cutting tool. The naming of boundary edges uh, has been improved uh, to get rid of the dependence of names on their position in space. Uh, this work has been performed in the Boolean operation, the operations of cutting, trimming, and splitting. And now we are still working on it in the sweep operations. And the pattern feature repeated in array copies are now named via copy indices. Previously, they had uh, the same names. Merging attributes uh, when merging vertices and edges has been improved. It was not previously available for vertices. For edges, it was earlier, but only for tangent chains of them. You can use callback functions when processing merges, splits, and attribute modifications if you attach uh, custom attributes to the body elements, and more about user attributes. The ability to inherit from the system user attribute and pay user attribute is closed. This was done at the request of users so as not to confuse it with the base class of the user attribute and be external attribute. When inherited from the first, models cannot be read by the kernel without your application and by your other applications. Also, the ability to disable generating the building history of shells and frameworks has been added at the user requests. Not everyone needs it for work, and they cleaned it after applying features to free up extra memory. However, I would like to remind you that you will definitely need a building history if you encounter any problems or errors. Uh, without the building history, we won't be able to help you, so don't disable it completely. In conclusion, we would like to announce our main development plans. 
the main direction is uh, the development of surface modeling. This is the development and refinement of variable section surfaces, further improvement of surfaces from curve meshes in terms of uh, the ability to set connecting conditions on borders, making it possible to add a thickness to an inexact input geometry in thin walled shells. A building a patch consisting of several faces with the ability to set connection conditions on the borders. In addition to surface modeling, we plan uh, the following improvements. This is construction of sheet metal parts from solid ones. We are going to continue work on unifying the parameters of functions to simplify working with them. We are developing the functionality that repairs errors in geometry. We are going to continue working on naming and attributes, and I hope uh, that we will finally complete the documentation on these topics. And of course, we continue to develop and expand uh, using multi-threading in our kernel. Uh, thank you. Any questions? You are welcome. Thank you, Andre, for great presentation. Uh, so. Please, if you have questions, you can write them uh, in the questions uh, panel. Uh, and I see the first questions there. So yeah, OK, uh, that's great. And uh, I want to introduce you uh, head of C3D development, Nikolai Golovanov. I think that um, most of you know him by his uh, book geometric modeling that is available everywhere uh, right now uh, so uh, Nikolai we don't see you yeah now we can see no. yeah yeah that's great we can see you we can see your presentation so uh, Nikolai will tell you about uh, the features of C3D modeler that we call high class features so this is the, um, as, as, as we uh, call it, the most uh, difficult, the most high class functionality of a modeling kernel. So Nikolai, welcome. Hello, hello dear friends. I'm going to tell you about some new features of Modela, namely the functionality that allows you to perform construction of smooth curves managing the distance of offset curves and surfaces, extension of the multiple boundary faces simultaneously, merging smoothly joined faces into one face, construction of conic section surfaces, filleting edges along the reference curve. Now you can build smooth, smooth curves. Smooth is the sense of smooth change in curvature. Smooth curves can be either on vertices or on tangents of reference polyline. The curve on the length left is built on the vertices of reference polyline. Several vertices lie on the same straight line, so the constructed curve has a straight zone. The curve on the right is based on the tangents of reference polyline. Uh, the left figure shows if the polyline vertices lie on circle, then the smooth curve or constructed on these vertices will be close to the circle. The right figure shows if the uh, polyline is circumscribed about the circle, then the smooth curve of the tangents will also be close to the circle. The genetic determinant is constructed to control the shape of the curve. It contains information about derivatives at individual points of a curve. For clearly, it represents a polyline. You can achieve the desired shape of the curve changing the geometric determinant. The, the geometric determinant is used to construct a curve that has a linear varying curvature. This curve has a shape of a clothoid, also known as a carnue spiral. The distance of offset 
curves can now differ at the end of the curve and can change as a linear or cubic function of the curve parameter or remain constant as previously. The slide shows of the curves with the linear and cubic changes of distance. Now you can specify different distance for the offset surfaces in the corners of the parametric area. It can change according to the linear or cubic rule uh, for each parameter. Uh, the boundary faces extension function has been upgraded. Now it can process multiple faces simultaneously. The slide shows the result of simultaneous simultaneously extending several faces to a given surface. You can replace two smoothly joined faces with a single face. Uh, the figure shows the five faces before and after merging. The figure shows the original model, which consists of a set of smoothly joined faces. Each face based on separate surface that knows nothing about the neighbor faces. The figure shows the result of combining uh, the set smoothly joined faces shown on previous slide. The faces were combined in pairs. Uh, the construction of conic section surface has been implemented in the genetic kernel. A conic section surface can be obtained by moving a flat genetic curve along the reference curve. The plane of the genetic curve maintains a orthogonality to the reference curve in their point of intersection. As it moves, the genetic curve can change its shape according to the controlling function. A conic section surface can be made to smoothly join two specified surfaces. The functionality allows you to build surfaces with section of five types. A section in the form of algebraic curve of degree two, parabola, hyperbola, ellipse, arc. A section in the form of nudes, which provides a smooth curvature connection at the ends, a section in the form of arbitrary spline with the control points, a circular section and ruler section. For each type of conic section surface, there are several ways to construct it. This figure shows the generic curve in the form of an algebraic curve of degree two. It begins, it begins on one guide curve and ends at the another guide curve. The direction of the curve at the ends is determined by two mating surfaces. The shape of the section is determined by discriminant. The reference curve is the line segment. The figure shows the generic curve in the form of nudes, which at the ends provide smooth connection with mating surfaces. It begins on one guide curve and ends at the another guide curve. The sec of the section is determined by the discriminant function. The figure shows the generic curve in the form of arbitrary open two-dimensional spline. It uh, must have a spanning triangle inside which the spline is located. The spline must have a control point and an interagent method based on them. The figure shows the surface with circular section. The radius change according to the function. The reference curve is coincide with the axial curve. The generic curve is a circle on this figure. The beginning of the circle is defined by the guide curve. The circle touches the mating surface in the, its beginning. 
The change in all the radius of the circle is set by a function. The generic curve is an arc on this figure. The beginning of the arc is defined by the guide curve. The arc touches the uh, main surface and its beginning. The generated curve is line segment on this figure. At the beginning point and then the end point, the segment touch two reference surfaces. You can control which side of the constructed uh, surface should touch the reference surfaces. The figure show the conic section surface which the shape is determined by an additional curve that the constructed surface must touch pass through. Uh, the direction of the end of section is determined by the apex curve. The figure show the conic section surface with which shape is determined by an additional surface that the constructed surface must touch. The direction of the end uh, of the section is determined by the apex curve. A torus phase with trapezoidal cutout is taken for the test. The conic section surface is constructed on two long edges. Its shape is determined by the arbitrary curve on the cut part of the torus, which constructed surface must pass through. The reference curve is the arc of the axial surface, uh, circle of the cutted part of torus. The constructed conic section surface completely coincides with the cutout part of the torus face. These conic section surfaces are constructed on several edges, smoothly joined with several faces. The reference curve consists on two segments, the surface discriminant change to the according to the specified function. A new method for filleting edges has been added to existing ones. The slide shows a fillet surface which uh, with the reference curve the fillet radius of constructed surface is variable. It's defined by a radius of sphere that pass along the given reference curve and touch another support surface. The functionality is still under development and works only with a single curve. Thanks for attention. Thank you so much, Nikolai. Uh, it was one question uh, to you. Uh, Yuri already answered it, but please also read it, and maybe if you have additional comments, please, please answer. So thank you very much. Uh, and uh, next, uh, we want to talk about the innovation, and uh, I want to introduce you, Andrei Tumanin, uh, leading developer of a C3D modeler, and uh, uh, leading developer of a C3D B-Shaper. Andrei? Yes, okay. So, dear colleagues, um, my name is Andrei Tumanin. I am leading developer at C3D Labs. Today, I would like to tell you about C3D B-Shaper. Uh, since C3D B-Shaper is one of newest component of C3D toolkit, I will first provide a short overview of this module. After that, I will talk about some new features and issues we are currently working on, as well as share plans for the future. As most other geometric kernels, uh, C3D kernel uses a boundary representation, also called BREP, as a primary representation of modeled object. Uh, using a triangulation algorithm uh, based on models boundary representation, it is relatively easy to build uh, a polygonal representation of the model for its uh, visualization and geometric calculation. Uh, the reverse transformation from the polygonal model to boundary representation is much more problematic. 
For this purpose, we developed uh, the CCDB Shaper module, uh, which is responsible for converting from polygonal to boundary representation. There is a lot of 3D data in polygonal uh, representation. Uh, I divide the sources of polygonal data into three groups. Uh, first of all, there are um, online catalogs and databases like 3D Warehouse, Kelt 3D, and so on. These sources offer 3D data in polygonal formats like STL, VRML, and OBG. The second major group are the files um, that result uh, from 3D scanning. And the third group uh, contains uh, results of finite element analysis, uh, which are deformed meshes uh, or um, topology optimization design results. We suggest to use C3DB Shaper in following cases. Uh, to optimize uh, the visualization of uh, polygonal mesh models, to obtain planar projection of polygonal mesh models, to reconstruct some surfaces from uh, the polygonal mesh, and finally to edit polygonal mesh uh, based models. Uh, the overall process of uh, converting from polygonal mesh to boundary representation implemented in C3DB Shaper is consist of three main steps. Uh, the segmentation uh, groups the original mesh polygons into subsets, also called uh, segments. Um, after that, um, uh, the reconstruction of surfaces is performed, and finally, the rep shell is constructed. Um, Consider in more details uh, these steps. Uh, first order segmentation, analyze the mesh, uh, um, uh, is based on uh, normal vectors and provides uh, an initial subdivision of the mesh and detect sharp edges as well as flat or high curved areas. The second order segmentation, analyze the mesh according, according to the principal curvature values and provide a sufficient basis for classifying uh, simple algebraic surfaces. Uh, the next step is, um, mesh or is surface reconstruction. Each of the segments um, uh, must be associated with the surface, approximating its form with a given precision. First of all, the principal curvature values are used to define if it is possible to describe the segment form um, with an elementary surface like plane, cylinder, sphere, and uh, etc. Uh, if none of above surfaces uh, can be used to describe the se segment form, uh, a NURP surface uh, will be created for it. And the final stage of the transformation is constructing BREP. Based on segmented regions with fitted surfaces, a region adjacent graph is built. This graph reflects the complete topology and serves as the basis for building the final BREP model. Uh, at present time, C3DB Shaper can reconstruct surfaces of following types. Plane, cylinder, corner, sphere, torus, revolution surface, and NURPS. Um, in the next part of the presentation, I would like to talk about the principal factors that blocks with obtaining a high quality result of B shaper conversion. First of all, it is a factor of noisy initial mesh. For example, in the case of CAD uh, model triangulation, often we make deal with four or five significant digit uh, in point representation. Uh, the second issue is the mesh defects uh, such as mesh holes, non-manifold geometry, and so on. And the third factor is if errors are introduced by the numerical procedures of surfaces fitting. And also, the complexity of initial polygonal mesh model is a problem itself. For example, once reconstructed surfaces have been fitted, where two of them meet in a sharp edge, they can can be intersected to produce the edge uh, between them. In case of reconstructed surfaces, this cannot be done robust at all times. The reconstructed surfaces and their associated directions and axes, uh, if any, must obey various rules, such as being tangential, symmetric, concentric, and so on. 
due to the noise of polygonal mesh and the numerical nature of the surface fitting algorithm, such a least square fitting, we may obtain inaccurate surfaces and poor BREP models. We analyzed the possible solution of these problems and uh, identified two main direction of the development of B-Shaper. Uh, the first approach is a simplified model for creating BREP models. The main idea. If the surface-surface intersection calculation will not be robust, uh, B-Shaper will create a boundary edge by corresponding segment edge. This approach is first place is suitable in case of visualization. The simplified model already has been implemented in C3D Toolkit 2020. Uh, some examples of uh, B-Shaper work in simplified model. Presented models uh, contain boundary edges but look quite well. Boundary edges uh, are exist on cylinder torus connection, corner sphere connection, and so on. Another, more complicated approach is based on constrained fitting. Assume that after the sum surface fitting, various engineering constraints are detected. We are trying to recognize more, most likely constraints using the initial parameters of fitted surfaces. B shaper selects group of relevant surfaces that are likely to comprise a set of parallel or orthogonal entities, share common axis and direction, and so on. Constraints are then enforced as a post process by changing the values of the surface parameters. All these problems are converted into solving a large system of nonlinear algebraic equations. Two Resolve constraints, we are using a C3D solver, which is also a part of C3D toolkit. This option is under development right now. Next, I will present the possibilities for converting a polygonal into boundary representation using the C3D shaper that are currently available. The first example is a tank model. The source mesh consists from more than uh, 24,000 polygons, uh, which are transformed into 2,300 BREP faces. Another example, uh, polygonal mesh of lifter vehicle. You can see more impressive result. More than 20,000 polygons transformed into BREP model with uh, uh, 314 faces. And finally, some engineering model. Uh, C3DB Shaper also demonstrates a good result for this model. And um, finally, some of the things we are also working on, including advancing the automatic segmentation algorithm, improving the construction of free-form nerve surfaces. That's all. Thank you for attention. Thank you, Andre. Thank you for your presentation. So let's uh, look uh, at questions. Right now there is no questions about okay. B-Shape, but I think that uh, they will come later. So thank you. Thank you. Uh, and next, uh, let me introduce you Alexander Avakherdians, uh, our leading developer of a C3D solver of our parametric constraints solver. So Alexander, I can see you. Yeah. Hello. Please share the screen. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's, okay. You can let's start. start. So my name is Alexander. I am a C3D Solver developer, and I will present you a new features of C3D Solver. But first of all, I want to do a brief preview of C3D Solver capabilities and talk a little about engineering tasks in which the use of C3D Solver must be useful. First task is a two-dimensional parametric sketching. C3D solver gives an opportunity to put different logical and dimensional constraints on two-dimensional curves and do degrees of freedom analysis. Also, it provides powerful drag and drop and login functional. In addition, we have JavaScript wrapper that wraps almost full two-dimension solver functional. So next task is a composition of three-dimensional solids in assembly. C3D Solver provides a wide choice of logical and dimensional constraints to make different types of solid bodies. It provides degrees of freedom analysis, logging, and drag and drop capabilities, as well as two-dimensional solver. 
Another one important task in three-dimensional case is the construction of pipelines and wireframes. Three-dimensional solver provides fun functional to create line segments with variable length and circular arcs with variable length and radius and binding them by logical and dimensional constraints. Degrees of freedom analysis, drag and drop and logging are supported for this subject area as well. This is a sufficiently new functional and this year we did a big job to increase its stability and performance. Also, if to talk about three-dimensional solver, in this release, we concentrated on task that follows from the solids composition task. This is a so-called collision detection task. In next report, leader of the C3D solver team, Alexander Maximenko, will present new features of collision detection model. This, so that's why I will further focus on the new features of two-dimensional solver. Our first new feature is a dynamic transformation. Dynamic transformation is an extension of a dragon functionality. Previously, we had only so-called a cursor dragon that allowed to move geometric objects according to cursor moving. Dynamic transformation allows to transform geometric objects according to some transformation metrics. Different transformations such as translation, rotation, scaling are now supported. Dynamic transformation inherits cursor dragon best, best practices. Uh, in first step, in first preparing step before transformation attempt, it finds and fixes maximum possible amount of geometric objects. In second transformation step, it works both for a single transformation and for a serial transformations, so-called animation mode, with the same efficiency and in the same way. Let's take a look at the API. Since the drag and drop consists of two steps, preparation and transformation, our cursor drag and drop consists of two types of functions that must be called sequentially. First type of functions are the preparation step functions. They are beginning with the prefix GCE prepare. If you want to start the drag and drop process, you must first call this type of function. And only after that, you can call the function of transformation step. GC move point function. In dynamic transformation case, there is only one function that unites both steps within itself and handle them without performance decreasing. So next, the next new feature is the so-called lazy formulation of equation. Why it is important? User constraints are presented in C3D solver in two forms. First form is a geometric form. This form is close to user application subject area. Second form is an algebra algebraic form. It's needed to form a system of algebraic equations. Before this release, we created these two forms at the same time, right after the API call of create the constraint. Now we divided creation of these forms into two stages. Geometric form is still created right after the API call. And the algebra, algebraic form is now created after the API, after the calling API function that returns GCE result type. First benefit of, of this feature, we started to support adding of constraints in parallel mode. Before this, we supported adding of constraints only in thread safety mode. That wasn't good because of thread locks and every add constraint functions. This might be very useful, for example, when you're opening a big file with a big amount of co constraints and want to fill system of constraints as fast as your hardware allows. The next benefit from the lazy formulation is a better quality of the system of algebraic equations. As a result, accuracy, quality, and predictability of solving process are increased in some difficult cases. For example, in such cases as a smooth connections of, curve, of curves, so-called G1 and G2 connections. Another one feature is a request about status of constraint in a system of equations. It's important to emphasize that status of any single constraint is a result of any 
is the result of the analysis of the entire system of equations. After this analysis, all user constraints are divided into two groups according to the ability to solve them. These groups are listed on this slide. Now we supported seven groups. Uh, so this slide il illustrates an example of how this functionality can be used. All constraints on this sketch are divided into two groups using, using GCE constraint status function. First one is well-conditioned group of constraints, blue constraint labels on figure. And second one is a redundant group, orange constraint labels in figure. I mean, I mentioned earlier that we provide a logging capabilities. Our logging tool allows to log any C3D solver API data types and functions, but we had a gap. Some of our API functions accept as an argument C3D modeler types, and we didn't log them. This release, we closed this gap in our logging tool capabilities. We have added logging of matrices and two-dimensional curves of general type MB curve. Also, since this release, logging began to work correctly in parallel mode. And the last improvement I'd like to, tell, to talk about is an acceleration of interpolation splines. C3D Solver supports two types of spline curves. First is an ordinary NURBS curve, and second one is a NURBS curve that passes through some set of given points. All all these points are fixed on such a curve by coincidence and fixed curve point constraints. We call such a curve an interpolation spline. Because of these multiple fixing constraints, performance of, of the interpolation splines sharply decreases with increase of interpolation points number in comparison with ordinary NURBS. Based on point influence zone property of NURBS curves, we have optimized our constraints in for interpolation splines. As a result, we have achieved significant performance improvement and now performance of interpolation splines in most cases is close to performance of ordinary NURBS curve. So that's it. Thank you for your attention. Thank you. So if you have questions about uh, C3D Solver, please ask them. And uh, next, let me introduce you Alexander Maximenko, who is uh, C3D Solver team leader. But today we will tell you about the collision detection functionality in our toolkit. Alexander, yes, I can hear you. Uh, good day, colleagues. Okay, I would like to talk about another model from our geometry kernel, the collision detection manager. In addition to the general review, I will talk about some improvements and functionality. The purpose of collision detection model is especially to work with dynamic sense in real time. It's useful when you need to check the motion bounds of the mechanical parts or to check for possible collisions between SMB parts. Besides, to detect collision in dynamics, the model is also useful for single interference tests. Another task of the model connected to proximity queries that involve both uh, measuring the distance between objects and uh, searching for the cl closest pair for the set. A closest pair could be a pair of faces uh, and uh, nearest points on them. First of all, I will tell you uh, about the main structure on which the performance of the collision detection is based, uh, namely uh, bounding volume tree. Abbreviately BV3. Uh, the slide illustrates the swept body built on the movement of a circle section along a path curve. Uh, the sample is good for illustrating a process of dividing volumes. At the beginning, uh, 
we could create a minimum volume box which completely, completely contains the original body. An important thing is to choose the orientation of the axis so that uh, bounding volumes uh, most tightly packs the body. Part, uh, uh, the process is follows. Uh, the space of the body is divided by the longest axis of the root box. So both boxes overlap, uh, overlap each other. We repeat the dividing procedure in bounding box calculation until some finite elements are reached. So at the next level, we get eight boxes, 16 boxes, and so on, until we get the some finite elements. The process stops when they reach the, the finite elements of the shell. As a result of subdivision process, we have a binary tree representing a bounding volume hierarchy. Thus, the space of body obtained a special structure convenient for geometric search and allowing to reduce many algorithms for good speed. Using the tree, we fight for the logarithmic time complexity. Uh, that will be a great result. The main advantage of uh, the volume tree is the quick search for non-intersected sections, which allow you to avoid the wasted searching time uh, when there is no solution. In uh, result, um, so uh, in relation to the minimal distance query, the BV tree allows to reject from the search large volumes, that is, space parts that don't contain the clauses pair. The screen shows in yellow a subset of the finite elements that are involved in the search. Gray is domain rejected from the search. One of improvements made due to an optimization aimed to reduce the search domain, including the closest pair. The slide shows a significant difference after the optimization. Domain of the search is narrowed. Uh, this, uh, this was an improvement in the search algorithm itself. Other improvements relate to deal with groups of bodies. Now, uh, the API provides the ability to group bodies, including through their reuse. Uh, two, uh, two new functions are added. First is uh, declaring a component as a union of bodies, and the second registers an instance that belongs to a pre-declared component. The next frame shows a sample that contains a lot of instances in which same three bodies are reused. And I, another, sorry, ah, entire scan has two groups. Uh, at left uh, bottom, and uh, the right uh, top of the picture. It should be noted the BV tree is computed for each entire group by bottom to up manner. So we have a super tree uh, constructed for bottom to top pair uh, by pairwise union of subtrees of each body. The final subtree covers the entire group. Uh, to estimate the closest pair between two groups, here uh, it is necessary to test all the bodies of one group with all others. 
this leads to poor computational time. New search algorithms exploit super BV trees of the groups with all benefits of the approach. And so we are able to reject lots of pairs from the search. Uh, they are colored green. Uh, yellow is a domain of the search for closest pairs. Mm -hmm. There are still many opportunities for further improvements. Uh, two main directions are uh, leveling up performance and convenience of API and functionality. That's all. Thank you. Thanks for your questions in, uh, in chat. Yeah. Thank you, Alexander. Yeah, the, there is a first uh, question. Uh, can collision detection works with BREP only or meshes too? Yeah, so let's uh, move forward. Uh, let me introduce you Alexander Spivakov, uh, C3D Convert uh, team leader. Uh, hello, colleagues. Hello. So I'm starting. The presentation show now. Yes, we see it. Okay. So, hello, colleagues. I'm Alexander Spivakov, and as a developer of, of C3D Converter, I'm going to present uh, the progress in the uh, C3D Converter, the shift for a year, and our plans. Uh, first, in all features of GT of, of C3D Converter, I would figure out four main dimensions. The first one is related to JT forward support, and the second one to PMI and attributes. And the third is our traditional work related to diagnostics and healing, and new work extension of API and capabilities of C3D Converter. So, as for JT support, we have faced an issue of how to export mesh to JT format quickly and uh, lose as minimal information as possible. The constitution, the design of uh, meshes in C3D and GT and is different. And, uh, it take, uh, and so we need to uh, do some transformation from one form to another one. And the, okay. But uh, before we did this work, uh, we had to choose whether we had to export uh, meshes quickly but uh, without relationship between faces or wait for a long time and uh, export the entire, the entire mesh. Uh, the problem is uh, that the time of export or the time of transformation uh, grows at least quadratically versus number of uh, faces in, a, in the original solid. And as far as you can see in the figure, there are two samples here. The many faces in the solid is not an exotic case for mechanical cat. So we found the hotspots and uh, suppressed the influence on the export time. And uh, now we do not need to choose between the uh, performance and integrity of model. And as a co-achievement, we got an opportunity to diagnose uh, meshes. For instance, uh, you can find the degenerated triangles. In, the, in meshes. And another work related to GT is related to PMI support. We used to, we used to work in, with PMI in manner that it could be represented by curves or texts. The planar objects such as the highlighted by green fonts were not supported. And uh, now we can work with embedded into JT format fonts to use min this minimal set of symbols and place there where they are demanded. A year ago, we presented a new feature of API, such as assignment of attributes on the paths during export and input. And uh, this year, we implemented the support of attributes the paths in JT. Here is a sample of same model opened by two systems. On the left uh, part of the figure is the gt 2 go viewer by Siemens, and on the right part is our test application. 
and attribute from a GT metadata segment is collected on uh, both parts of the figure. So next to attributes use, usage, there are special type of information which is uh, which I would call integral characteristics of paths. This is a volume, surface, area, density, and mass. Uh, and now we can export and import them through step and JT formats. If formats, of course, support such functionality. The use is just simple. You just need to assign attribute this specially definite uh, uh, key on a uh, part and uh, or read it, get attribute with a uh, of and find attribute with specific uh, key from a list of attributes. Another work is related to, to PMI, but it deals with C3D format. C3D format generally is not designed for attribute uh, reading or writing, but uh, there, is, there is demand for, of our customers to, to show the PMI. So we decided to represent PMI in its visual form by curves or some other elements. But uh, we faced uh, an issue, how to operate with symbols if, if they exist in PMI. So we solved this uh, problem in uh, this way. So uh, in the basic basis functionality, we replace all text information by its gabarit uh, figure. But a user or customers, if they like, if they have forms, they know how to transform it to curves, they can, can, uh, they can uh, do that on their side. Uh, so next to the third uh, direction of our development, hidden, uh, the main focus of, of this uh, direction was related to self-intersection of loops. This functionality is used in two ways. Uh, firstly, it's a, a kind of standard post-processing procedure of, of input. Uh, a simple model is uh, here on the left side. But uh, also this function can be called on demand after some modeling operations as shown on the right figure. Healing is a very various uh, area of functionality but uh, there are some curious cases we faced uh, this year. Here is a, a simple enough model. Uh, it looks so, but uh, there was some problem with it. It crashed on input. How we try to solve that problem? As usual. So we separated step file, which it came from into a series of file, one file per one solid, and try to find uh, the part which crashed uh, the entire assembly. But we did not manage to find that. So what turned out to that model? It turned out that uh, there were re written two representations of this part. The solid, the body representation, and surface representation. Uh, all these representations are transformed to a solid object. And two, these two solid objects are based on the same geometry, which is forbidden by c 3 rules. And after we, after we found uh, the origin of crash, so we fixed it. And the next issue uh, is related to uh, shapes which uh, do not respond to one which other. So faces have this one geometry, edges the other, and the vertices the third one. So in this case, we had uh, no choice except for not to, not to use uh, some helpful maybe information from uh, SAT files, this model will come from SAT, and uh, intersect uh, the surfaces manually and uh, build the geometry by, uh, by information we are sure in. And uh, the last but not the least uh, area of functionality is uh, how to extend functionality of C3D converter. One of most popular questions to us is if we support uh, formats by card systems such as NX, Creo, Katia, and etc. 
And the usually answer that we do not have such support, but if you like, you can license a third party component, input a, a card file, export it is supported by C3D, and then input. That's uh, not, we, that way, as, well, as we found, is not uh, the best one uh, because uh, it takes time, it takes uh, extra transformations where we can use information. And uh, instead of using the files, we decided to develop a special API for any, for any other first party components. So how it works on, this, on the point of view of C3D user. So first you should get a converter instance, then register a foreign reader, which we call a plugin, then run the input procedure, and after that release resources. I would pay, I, here I pay attention that uh, the third party activation component should lay beyond C3D, maybe on the plugin side. And of course, this functionality will take the first line in our plans for a year. Because we need uh, to do extra checks, we need to implement and, uh, de and develop it for input PMI. Uh, and uh, after we find if the work is, is, is enough, we're going to publish the API for, for plugin so that anyone could uh, implement it for any system. And uh, we're going to uh, keep the line in diagnostics and healing to so heal self in the section of loops. Thank you for your attention. If you have questions, ask them. And uh, for now, I'm going to boast uh, what we achieved in uh, using third party uh, toolkits. Here is a sample of model which we bought uh, from a mix uh, file. We used uh, Copedia that uh, toolkit by Copedia Belgium company. Here is a solid a model and the PMI represented in graphical form. This uh, and this form is supported, but it seems not to be optimal because we are going to re recognize text and some numerical values such as uh, dimensions. So thank you again. If you have questions, welcome. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Alexander. Uh, yeah, uh, so you can use uh, this functionality to integrate uh, other uh, toolkits, yeah, to, to read uh, native file formats, not only the cap video. Yeah, so if you have questions or if you're interested in, uh, in this, please ask, ask questions to Alexander. So yeah, thank you, Sandra. Thank you. And next, uh, I want to introduce you Daria Yaitsky, uh, a leading developer of uh, C3D Vision, our visualization engine. Oh. Hello. Hello, Daria. One yeah, I can see you. Uh, so please share the presentation yeah that's great i can see it okay, so, okay. yeah welcome uh, hello everyone dear colleagues my name is daria i'm one of the developers of c3d vision component i'd like to tell you about new features of c3d vision you will see the main thesis of my report on the presentation slides after the completion of my presentation, you will be welcome to ask me all your questions. I wish to point out that I'm going to tell you about new features and the new and improved tools. So here you can see in the interaction scheme of the graphical user interface and C3D vision. The known libraries uh, used as example are event sources. We understand that describing a representation of events are performed in their format in each library. Uh, that's why uh, we developed a convert event listener filter to operate with any libraries in C3D vision. The filter converts a representation of the GUI events into C3D vision format. As a rule, event source is a graphical window where the whole scene is rendered. 
However, other systems uh, can objects act as events, uh, for example, a control or the main window. Also, we've improved the processes of controlling and of object editing. We finally synchronized updating of scene rendering and even processing. For example, when mouse moving and rotating the whole scene, frame updating is performed after its preparation. This provides a smooth rendering when any manipulating with the scene and its objects. That's more the uniformity of events, it's now guaranteed uh, than using various physical devices used in the process. You can see it here. In this case, the process operates uh, with two uh, event sources, a keyboard and a mouse. They translate homogeneous events uh, into the process, for example, move along the x-axis. Altogether, this allows using certain templates in the code. Besides, now than creating his own processes, the user is able to set even sources that are necessary on a case-by-case -case basis. These uh, devices can be customized on his own. For example, one can set certain case for the assigned devices to per perform our induction during the process. We finalized uh, the scene generator object factory. As you know, integration of C3D vision with the MAP kernel is implemented with two classes, MAP representation and the MAP geometry operating directly with the MAP representations uh, MB item. This allows the programmer creating specific templates to generate visual representations. As you can see in the diagram, uh, there is a sequence of creating visual representation for displaying. And there is a result of uh, performed code used uh, as an instance on the presented picture. I think you have noticed uh, the code is very laconic. We've also extended and finalized a set of simple geometric objects. They can be applied in tools separately and together as well. Also added the geometric object origin with the ability to select its primitives. They can be used as underlying objects while modeling. The picture here shows origin in two representations, simple and volumetric. We are making not only existing tools finalized, but brand new ones developed as well. So there are new geometric representations appeared in C3D vision. They are markers and icons. Here they are geometric icons based on images of various formats, symbolic and frequently used icons, a standard set of markers developed to mark limitations. Moreover, the user can create his own representations using the Painter tool. Some markers uh, you can see in the picture below. Developed geometric object height map surface geometry. It allows operating with a two-dimensional array of a height map. As you know, the array can be represented using images of PNG or other format. The object we've created allows to calculate both automatically and manually values for all three coordinates. You can see the result of the object work in the presented picture. This reflects a transition from the given height array as a bitmap in shades of gray to 3D representation. New objects based in the plane have appeared. Mass sketch representation and mass sketch geometry classes are designed to display an array of two-dimensional curves that are inherited from MB curve. Label representation and label geometry are designed to display text with adjustment of image orientation. We made uh, a shipping change of geometric objects. I'm going to enumerate the most basis of them. Screen plane only allows a specific geometry to set a rendering mode in the screen plane. No scalable allows to set segment geometry unscalable, not dependent on the overall scene zoom. And uh, double-sided lighting allows to set two-sided lighting to a specific geometry 
uh, not dependent on the overall scene lighting. Render mode allows to display the selected geometry in a specific mode. Tone, health tone, wireframe, etc. Section planes allows to set a geometry section of selected segments by the plane. As you can see in the picture, the section by the plane is set only the part and ignores the cube. Phase scaling is necessary to optimize a rendering of a complex geometry. It allows rendering not of the uh, assigned faces, but those that are not visible to the user, or vice versa, only those that are visible. This is defined by the flag that in creating the object is phase scaling. In this given example, uh, the front edges are not rendered. Layer rendering features have been changed considerably. The structure of render release settings options uh, allow settings uh, for a specific layer such rendering modes as lighting, material, and rendering type. The code fragment presented here demonstrates uh, how to configure two layers. Set render layer function uh, allows setting a layer number of a scene segment. The first parameter is a layer number, and the second one is a flag for distributing layer uh, rendering to child segments. In the picture, you can see uh, three layers, one of which is set by default, two layers are additional. Each layer has its own material as well as a displaying mode. And uh, now let's talk about improved tools. Improved peer find select area, tool selection of geometric objects using a frame. Added the ability to select both unifying uh, and cutting frames, as well as their combination from right to left uh, and from right uh, from uh, left to right, excuse me, and uh, from right to left. The presented picture shows uh, the section by the frame. The blue frame is a unifying one and the green frame is cutting one. Uh, you can see that uh, there is no need to ensure that the object gets uh, inside the frame. It's enough to cross it uh, with the green frame because in crossing the object becomes selected. A new zooming feature has appeared, zooming by the frame. Their camera zoom box tool has setting depending on the user's configuration. Cutting tool is a dynamic section by the plane. Added control of the plane position using interactive tools. On the left side of the screen, you can see the plane control using the move manipulator and uh, on the right side using the rotation manipulator. Code locator is a tool for converting coordinates. Its purpose uh, is to convert coordinates from physical devices, for example, keyboards as a rule in editing processes. We developed three types of locators. Model code locator is a conversion of coordinate values into model coordinates. A surface scan code locator is a conversion of coordinate values into a given surface. A curve, uh, curve screen code locator is a conversion of coordinate values into a given curve. In the presented picture, you can uh, observe locator separating. Another serious area is an implementation of interactive tools like manipulators. The base class of manipulators is called scene widget. It is used separately and also as a part of object editing processes. It represents a kind of wrapper including the processes to ensure its behavior and its representation on the screen. The presented picture shows a brief diagram of scene widget composition with a code fragment for creating a simple manipulator like hot point. Processes describing scene widget behavior can be initialized uh, with locators uh, defining the manipulator behavior. In scene widget for manipulators, we have provided and implemented standard behavior processes and their models covering about 80% of the necessary solutions. 
Now let's talk about uh, standard processes and representations in scene widget. What point is a widget with a specific representation and behavior? In the presented picture, you can see active hot point manipulators operating. Each of them has its own representation model, and each of the manipulators have uh, its own process with its certain behavior. Move manipulators implement a move along the specific axis. Pay attention to the picture on the left. Here you can see the manipulator operating in conjunction with the information size which indicates how far the manipulator was moved. Rotation manipulators implement the rotation around the axis. And finally, there are our plans before the end of the year regarding the most ambitious ideas on this slide. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Daria. Thank you very much. <laughs> oh yeah, uh, that's that's all for today. That's all our presentation presentations. So please uh, answer your question uh, to Daria about vision component. Uh, I see that we we have uh, ten minutes. So if you have questions to us, not only to Daria, please. Please ask your questions. We are ready to answer them, all of them. So yeah, if uh, there is no uh, there is no questions, I want to say thank you. Thank you for coming. Thank you for listening. Listen to us for two hours. <laughs> so uh, thank you very much. Uh, let's stay in touch. Uh, let's let's work together on our great products, your products. Yeah. Thank you very much, and see you see you soon on our next. Uh, Online presentation or maybe offline, some somehow. Thank you very much. Thank you and bye bye.